in my lifetime, some of the best football I've ever seen Rangers Football Club playing was in the first season under Dick Advocate. We had some absolutely fantastic players, world class players in my opinion. Can you remember that season? And what's your, what's your thoughts overall? I remember Dick Advocate? all the season I played. And uh, I have to say, yeah, we had a fantastic uh, football that uh, period because uh, it was more like European football because we had the Dutch, we had the Italians, they were the Scottish, which were very good Scottish players. We had a good mix. There was an Argentinian, there was a French. Uh, I think uh, that kind of football uh, was very unique football because uh, we, we won the league by 24 points, something like that, so we were definitely cruising that season. Um, I don't know what uh, was the past Rangers, because I wasn't playing for, for them. I've seen a lot of, uh, lot of uh, tapes and I can tell Rangers, always, especially when they had a fantastic run in Europe, the Champions League. Um, of course, for us, this season after the change of a big era was important to to make sure that uh, Rangers was doing the right thing. So we went on the pitch from the first day of the season and we started to play an excellent football and we won for two seasons in a row the league. So the three managers, who would you rate the highest? Art McLeish. I think every manager has his own view about uh, dealing with the players, managing, coaching. Um, I think I've been lucky because uh, each of them has a different uh, attitude on uh, talking, coaching and, uh, and organizing the team. Um, everybody knows that with Advocate, of course, from uh, human point of view, uh, I didn't like so many things about him, but uh, as, a, as a manager can't really say anything against him, of course, because he's been a winner, not just here, he's been a winner everywhere he's been, so uh, from human point of view, um, I didn't like the way he did so many things. Last one, of course, was taking away the Arman from me, when uh, the team was not performing well. Um, of course, when you, you have this problem, you need to share this kind of uh, problem all together with the players, with the club, as a manager as well, and eventually even with supporters. Uh, well, that period he was blaming everybody, of course me through them, upset himself, which is, which was basically the leader of the team. So I didn't like that kind of attitude. But as I said, that's part of the past and uh, the only thing I was caring about and I still care about it was the, the future, the present of the micro, yeah, which is Rangers. It was very clear at the time and you just, you just hit the nail on the head there when you said about how you felt when the arm band was taken off you. But tell me about how it felt becoming the Rangers captain, the first Italian, the first foreigner really to be the captain of Rangers. Did you realise how in Scotland how, how important the role is as a captain? And how did they feel as an honour? Yeah, it is an honour. It's an absolutely honour because um, at the time there were players probably more well known in Scotland than me, like Colin Hendry and others, George Albert, others, there were a few others there. But um, I think my attitude has been always the one who that uh, never give up, not even during the training, not even during the friendlies. I'm a winner. I try to win everything, even when I play cards. If I lose, I get angry. So, I think probably during that precision with Advocate, probably uh, he's been focusing on me and highlighting that kind of quality. That's why he mentioned me as a man, as a captain, which was not uh, a surprise for me because whatever I've been. Even if I didn't have the hard band with me, like in Fiorentina, but I was the captain in the dressing room. Yeah. Because most of the time I was the one who was organizing things, talking with the manager, talking with the chairman, and dealing with even with the fans sometimes. So for me, having an hard band or not was not a big difference because my attitude will never change. Uh, of course, be a captain for this massive club 
the first foreign player to become was uh, definitely a, a fantastic honor. Uh, but of course, I knew that in the beginning I would have some problem, probably with some press, and that will happen because no many of the reporters did like me as a captain because I was Catholic, because I was Italian. Uh, what I what tried to, to explain to everybody, to re any radio supporter, that uh, you should judge me as a, as a player, not just because my religion is Catholic. I would do everything, and I, I think I've done everything in my life to, to bring trophies to, to Rangers. Uh, my top was always wet any game, no matter what. So I think in the beginning there were some problems because my performances they were not very, very good because of course when you're coming from an injury so long you, you take time. But after a few months, I think the feeling with the fans has been fantastic. And that's why we've been winning so long. And, and as you see, the Scottish press tried to make a big issue about the religious aspect of it and the cultural aspect being a foreigner. But would, would you agree that the Rangers supporters didn't ever turn no, on the No, I think sometimes that? the press try to analyse um, what they like to put in advance, uh, which at that time was easy for them to say Lorenzo cannot be a captain of Rangers because he's Catholic. Nobody said that, to be fair, in front line. But through the lines, you could yeah. read that that was one of the reasons why. Uh, well, but when you signed for Rangers anyway, you knew the culture of the club and you're happy. No, to I knew it. I knew it. But as I said, until you're here, you don't realize how big was it. Maybe less now, but was at this time. Uh, but still, uh, for me, it was important to wear that jersey and doing well for that jersey. The, the truth of the matter is, it hurt the opposition, it hurt the Scottish media, and, and it hurt Celtic support more than it did anyone. The, the captain of the Rangers being a Roman Catholic and giving his all. That was the, that was the way the support is. Um, I think, as I said many, many times, um, you should judge me for what I do for the jersey, for what I do on the pitch. If on the Sunday I like to go to church or whatever, I cross myself for some reasons. It's nothing to do with what I do on the pitch or what I do for this club. I think uh, my my contribution at Ranger Football Club has been fantastic yeah. because uh, I, I what everything I've done for this club was through passion. Because from the first day that I couldn't play, but I was understand watching the game. I could tell these fans are fantastic. These fans are absolutely unique. And through the six years I've been a Ranger, even now, the fact that I'm coming quite often in Glasgow and every time I met uh, Scottish Rangers supporter all over the world, not just in Glasgow, but I've been in America, I've been in Hong Kong, I've been everywhere. And you meet Rangers supporters, you know, you know that I've done the right choice to, to sign for Rangers. Okay, so that treble winning team, let's get to some of the players here. First of all, last this time last year I interviewed Michael Moles in the same place and asked him the same question. The Scottish media at the time tried to hint, as you said earlier, they never suggested it, but they hinted that there were certain problems at Ibrox at the time, that the Italians and the Dutch didn't like each other and there was, there was no speaking in that. What was your feelings on that? That's just media. They wanted to try to give Rangers a problem because, as I said before, we were definitely the strongest team. And uh, there were no news if Rangers was winning or keep winning. So they had to find uh, a situation where they could sell more newspapers. So they found this uh, strange way to say that the Italian and the Dutch, uh, they were not going together. But I've got uh, hundreds and hundreds of uh, witnesses who can tell you that uh, yeah. restaurants, disco, playing golf is strange, but we used to go out myself, Sergio, Giovanni Barbroncos, Arthur Newman, Fernando Rickson, Michael, Rod Wallace. This was our group. Yeah. We used to go out, basically, Craig Murr. On the park and off the park, you were Absolutely. We were unique and inside the park and outside the park. So what everything's been said in that period was absolutely rubbish. The fact that the manager was Dutch, probably that was uh, something that the press uh, didn't like as well, because, uh, but nobody wanted to say it. Yeah. Because when Adbert came here, 
basically it get ro rid of the old uh, players, great players. So nobody wanted to say that, but then uh, they had to find this, a strange way to say that uh, the Dutch here they yeah, were they not. They created an absolutely. Yeah. So we'll start with the Dutch boys first. Then I want to get one of the players in that team. He did Michael Moles, Bert Conterman, Arthur Newman, who I, be I believe Arthur Newman was slightly underrated because I believe he was probably one of the best in his position at the time in the world. He had Ronald DeBoer and later on Frank DeBoer. What's your memories of the players? Well, the first season, uh, the two players who came in they were uh, Arthur Newman, who was coming from the World Cup in France, as if I don't remember wrong, yeah. and Giovanni Van Bronckhorst. Uh, well, Newman, as you know, everybody knows, world-class player. Giovanni was a young player, but potentially was a very good player. So the first season, we had a great season, fantastic lads, um, in the pitch, outside the pitch, lovely guys. Can't really say anything against them because uh, the feeling was fantastic. As I said, even outside the pitch, we used to go out quite often. Second season, Michael Moles and uh, Fernando Rixen came, and of course, the, because we needed somebody up front, and we, we needed probably somebody on the right back. So we we had this team there, and uh, I thought that nobody could stop us that season because. Uh, and Bert Kortema, sorry, Bert Kortema came as well. Because we were too strong on the paper. Um, I don't know if probably with so many players in another season, another year, we had, we had lost the league because we were so good. But uh, we were probably too good. We were too good and uh, we lost that, uh, especially in the beginning of the season, we lost that kind of anger that uh, made us be a winner. And, uh, but that's not, nobody falls. It's no Dutch, no Italian. These are something that uh, happens sometimes and uh, nothing you can do about it. When, when you realize that that happened, it's too late eventually. Uh, that's how football goes. Before I move on to the Italian side there, I want to ask you about the Michael Moles injury. You'll remember the game, Rangers versus Bayern Munich. I got and then they got the injury in Munich. Uh, how do you feel would have done if you hadn't injured that game? Well, listen, uh, Michael was a fantastic player and uh, I still believe with Michael, that game in Monaco, was uh, like, I don't know, uh, a big jinx, I don't know. It was very unreal. I never played another game like that in my life, never. The question I have to ask you, you probably ask yourself, how did we not get a, how did we not get a goal that night? How did we not win? That's why I said, it's a game that I never played. I hope I never in another life of each of will play another game like that because... There's 20,000 Rangers fans at the game, there's supporters all over the ground and the Rangers we had, were brilliant. We had 15 chances. Yeah. Goal post, goal cross by so many saves from Bayern Munich goalkeeper. We lost the penalty after 10 minutes of the game maybe and we couldn't score. And then of course the losing Michael in that game as well was a big, big problem for us. But still the team performed well as well, even in the second half. We had so many chances, and honestly, that is a game that I still remember just the words of uh, Beckenbauer who said that the only team who should have won today were Rangers because they were definitely the team on the pitch. We've been lucky as a team, but we take the qualification on the next stage of Champions, of Champions League. So, Michael, in that game, lost uh, part of his career because when he came back, he came back well, but not like he was, and it took long before to get at his top level, unfortunately for us. So, we're going to the Italian players of that team. At the time, Rangers had signed a young Italian lad, an unknown lad, by the name of Rino Gattuso. But Rino, Rino was an unknown player for you, of course, in Scotland, but uh, 
or the youth level of Italian uh, national team, Rino was a very well known name. Everybody knew about him because he used to play for under 18, under 19. So he had his debut in Serie A with Perugia. So people knew about him, people, football people. Uh, Rangers signed Rino, and then of course signed me, signed Sergio Borini and Marco Negro. And for us, it was a fantastic to sign four players from Italy for your own country because at least in the beginning, yeah. just to acclimatize, they would be fantastic. Um, everything was perfect with me, with Sergio, with Marco in the beginning. Then, of course, because of my injury, I went back to Italy for four months, more or less, to get treated because because the cold weather was not in perfect condition to get treated and eventually to come back. Um, I left the team here, the club, in a fantastic stand because I left basically early September. We were cruising the league. Marco Negri was scoring for fun, scoring honestly. Just was like a joke scoring for Marco in that period. And I came back here basically in March. When I came back, uh, I could feel already there was something strange between the Italian guys. Marco had fell out with the, almost with the manager. He was not anymore regular player. 